watching West Hartford Community Television. Hi, you're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Go Girl Scouts! Connor, and you're watching Life in Style with Sarah, a show about the things that make life great. If you're looking for something fun to do with your family this summer, I have a great show for you tonight. My guest is Jeremy Castle. He is a camping expert as well as a manager of the West Hartford REI store. Thanks, Jeremy, for joining me. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to get the families out camping. Great. And I know some of our viewers are already thinking, mm, my kids aren't going to want to go camping. They don't have any interest. They're, they'd rather be inside playing their computer games. So how do families overcome that challenge? What do you recommend? Well, I think one of the big things is to encourage uh, the opportunities that kids have in the outdoors. And, and a lot of times, uh, children are going to be interested in that fort mentality and getting outside and playing in the backyards. Unfortunately, backyards aren't quite as big as they used to be, but one of the things that kids still enjoy doing, are, uh, one of the activities they still enjoy doing is camping outside. And um, the, one of the best ways that you can do that is just let them camp out in the backyard in an overnight with some friends. Okay, so start, at, start in your backyard. Absolutely. I think uh, once you start there, especially with their friends, you make it fun, enjoyable, and safe at the same time. They're going to be more likely to be encouraged or interested in, in playing around a little bit further away from home as well and maybe going out camping down the line. Beyond that, there are some games that, they, you, that you can play with your children, uh, games like uh, teaching them how to pick out the constellations of the stars or understanding the, the environment around them and, and really determining what kind of flowers and insects and, and things of that nature are going to be around them as well. Um, you know, teaching them about how to respect the outdoors along the way too. But beyond that, once you get from the backyard, the next step really is probably taking them on a, just a quick hike up the road. I think we have some great opportunities here in West Hartford up at the reservoirs for some mm -hmm. hiking. Um, you can take them up to Hubline Tower. Um, you obviously, you can go a little bit further and, and uh, head up into Western Mass or, or maybe up into Vermont down the line too. But when you get into that, you're really starting to look at those overnight excursions at that point. Okay, so you kind of plant the seeds of interest in small steps. Absolutely. I love the idea of back, backyard camping, particularly if you're going with young children. Mm -hmm. It's very risk-free, you know, and Absolutely. they get scared, they're cold, or they just don't like it, or, you know, need to go to the bathroom. They can just go inside. It's right there. And yeah. the great thing about creating that nice, safe environment is, is, as you said, I mean, if you get cold, you run inside and get another blanket or add another right. layer of clothing. If you get hungry, the food is right in the kitchen right there. Uh, the bathroom is right there, mm -hmm. as you said. So it creates an environment that's very familiar to them mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, while still maybe expanding the horizons just a, a little bit more. Well, and I think also for parents, it's a good dry run to know gosh, we don't have warm enough sleeping bags, or mm, forgot that we needed you know, extra food and snacks before bedtime. Definitely. That kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's also a little risk for the parents in that sense as well, because mm -hmm. you really identify what holes you might have in the gear that you might need to go out and create a great experience, not only for the kids, but for yourself as well. Right, right, you want everyone to be happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Including the mom and dad. <laughs> um, so let's say you've inspired the interest. Everybody's okay, you know, we're ready to do this. Um, what? is the best season to go camping? Well, the best season for a family truly is the summertime. Yeah. The spring months, uh, sometimes a little wet. Mm -hmm. uh, the fall months can get a little chilly mm -hmm. sometimes, and obviously winter in yeah. New England, you're going to get some Not snow. even to consider that yeah. <laughs> with little kids. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. But at the same time, summertime is fantastic. You get a, a wide variety of weather conditions, mm -hmm. but mostly you're going to get some great sunshine, some beautiful nights. Um, at the same time, it's, it's very safe. You get a lot of people out in the campgrounds as well, so you're, you're not necessarily going to be alone, mm -hmm. but it's a very safe environment for you as well as your children to be right. in. Right. And you, you probably want that first experience to be comfortable. Absolutely. And summer's more comfortable. I had an experience I was telling you about where we went camping in October, and we weren't too far from home. And we actually had a great time. I was a little too cold at night. I was very uncomfortable. And we agreed that this summer we'll do it again because everybody loved yeah, it. Absolutely. But we're going to do it maybe in July or August because it, it was just a little, and plus we didn't have, we weren't equipped 
for we weren't expecting it to be quite that cold. Yeah. So we weren't equipped for it. Well, one of the biggest mistakes that people do make when they get outside is is living like they live in the city, and it's a little bit different when you get outside. And when you're out running around in the woods and having a great time, maybe going on long day hikes, you're burning a lot more calories. And mm -hmm. in order to stay warm, one of the biggest mistakes people make is not eating a little bit different than they eat back home, and making sure that you eat right when you get into, into bed, and maybe mm -hmm. eating while you're in your sleeping bag mm -hmm. because your body needs to generate that heat. The only other thing you can really do is maybe go for a run really quick and then jump into your sleeping bag, right. but that, right. that should help out that next, uh, next right. fall. Right, <laughs> well, and excursion. I do like that tip of that if you eat something before you get, right, right before you go to, in your sleeping bag, mm -hmm. that your body will just naturally warm up a little bit. Absolutely, that helps quite a bit. I didn't know that, that's something yeah. I learned. Definitely. Um, okay, so we're, let's assume we're going in the summer, mm -hmm. everybody's on board, we're excited. Um, locally, where do you recommend? If you're not in your backyard, where are some good places to start? Well, any of the state campgrounds you can go to um, are, are fantastic places. Anywhere that, if you go on to any website that's going to tell you about a state campground, for example, um, you want to look for places that have facilities, um, things that are going to make it easier for you, especially the first time, whether it's a fire pit as a basic necessity if, if you're looking for just a good family camping experience, but also look for those restrooms, maybe even showers you might find out there. You're going to make it a little bit more similar to what your experience might be at home. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're making it very comfortable for everybody. Running water, obviously, um, is, is going to be something you want to look for as well. Um, that way, you know whether or not you need to bring your own water and bring plenty of it if you do. Um, mm -hmm. But any of the state campgrounds are going to be fantastic for what you're looking for your first time out. Right. Well, and then if you're going to a state campground, you can load your car up with everything you could possibly think you would need. And you feel, and there's comfort in that, that you can just Absolutely. bring as much as you need and it's right there for you. Yeah, if you happen to get into some rough weather and you're not feeling totally comfortable and maybe somebody gets a little bit sick or, or the children just uh, get a little too scared at night for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you're, you're more than able to jump into the car and, and make your way to a hotel or, or make your way mm -hmm. all the way home if necessary. But there is that safety net there for you as well. Yeah, the emergency backup plan. Exactly. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> No, we, um, we, last summer when we, this trip I was talking about, we went to winding trails. We were, we were members there. And it's great because our first trip we went and they actually sponsor a program where mm -hmm. it's a family camp out. Mm -hmm. They provide the food. Basically, they, there's a big field. There are about 30 tents set up. All the families are there. Like you said, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You have support. The staff is there. They provide the food. They have facilities. You get the feeling of being in the tent. Yep. We learned that we needed softer cushioning under our sleeping bags. We, we figured that out. Um, and then the next trip we took, we rented one of the campgrounds, camp spaces mm -hmm. that they have. And it was definitely it was more out in the woods. It was a little bit of a hike to the porta potty. It felt more like a real true camping sure. experience. But we were still very close to home. So if we needed to back out, we could get home. But we didn't. I mean, we had a great time. Even though I was cold, we had a fabulous time. And the yeah. kids love it. They're begging to go back this summer. So well, Great, great. Yeah, so it was great. So now we, we know we're going to go. We've got our location. We've got to get prepared. So what are the things that we really need to make sure you have to have a successful trip? Well, the great thing about camping is that it's, a, it's an activity that is always going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. And though you can go out and buy all the equipment you need, there are some great opportunities to rent some of the gear that you might need okay. as well. So if you're not necessarily ready to go ahead and invest in, in a totally new camp set like we have here today. Right. Um, we're well equipped. <laughs> we are. We're ready to go. But if you're not quite ready to, to invest in all those, mm -hmm. uh, those necessities that you might need, you might be able to save a little bit of money, especially mm -hmm. the first uh, time or two out and rent some of your gear, which would be mm -hmm. fantastic. Right. Um, you might be able to rent your tent, your sleeping bags, your stove, um, you know, things of that nature that are going to make, you know, they're almost a capital investment in some sense where you can right. focus on some of the smaller things that you're going to need and maybe some things that you can use for other things down the line as well. Maybe your stove is a, is a backup in case the power goes out in your home or a lantern, things of that mm -hmm. nature that can be kind of used um, in different areas of your of your own life as well. Okay, so that's a, that's a good tip. If you're not sure you're going to be in the camping lifestyle long term and you want to try it out, or even just try out what equipment works for you, you can absolutely. rent it. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is, is a great idea. This is a great way to really get your children involved too. And and you can try the tent out for the weekend, like, I, like we were referring to mm -hmm. earlier, and, and letting them pitch the tent in the backyard. It's also a good idea if you're brand new to camping or, or experiencing mm -hmm. life in the outdoors to make sure you get the product well enough in advance that you can practice setting it up and putting it together and using it. There's nothing worse than getting out to a campsite and never having seen a tent before and now you have to set it up in the dark because you were running just a little bit late. So 
Uh, definitely work through a dry run of setting up the tent, getting the sleeping bags out, and getting your sleeping pads inflated, all that kind of stuff to make sure that it works the way that you need mm -hmm. it to work. I think that's a good a good hint. Our our tent is not the most easy to set up, and you know we were there with our instructions. It was yeah. kind of embarrassing. All the other families were there. We're trying to you know fit the blue pole and the blue slot, and yeah. so probably we would have done well to. Pop absolutely. it up in the backyard first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and the great thing about tents these days is that they're very, very easy to set up for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, even if you haven't seen them, the, seen them before, uh, the shapes are pretty much standard and, for family camping tents anyways. And um, they're all going to be dome style and design for the mm -hmm. most part. So it's, it's fairly easy even if you haven't seen it, but it's always still a good idea to try it first. Right. Right. You limit the frustration. Absolutely. Just in case. Absolutely. Especially when the kids are there and they're getting a little tired and they're ready for bed right yep. now, you can get the tent up quickly and get them into their sleeping bags immediately if necessary. Right. I like you mentioned getting the kids involved. Mm -hmm. And um, on your website, you have um, expert ad an expert advice sec advice section, which mm -hmm. was great. I printed out a bunch of things from there. And one of the things I said is when you're preparing your trip, is to have the kids involved, have them involved in packing, Absolutely. deciding what they need to bring. I mean, obviously, you need to make sure you know check what they're bringing, so it's not just all stuffed animals and no you know warm pajamas. But right. um, then they have some ownership over it. Absolutely, which um, is great. Even even taking them to the grocery store with you, because one of the great things that you can do with family camping and going to your state park is just grab a cooler and fill mm -hmm. it up with the same kind of food that you're going to eat when you get home. Um, and you can make all that stuff on any one of the stoves that are commercially available mm -hmm. for, for family camping use. And um, take them out shopping. Ask them what they would like to eat when they're out there. Get them involved and get them excited about the experience that they're going to have. Let them fill up their backpack, but help them decide what's going to go into it as right. well. But let them put it in the backpack. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help them feel a little bit more engaged in what's going on and, and the experience they're about to, to undertake. Right. Right. So what are, so we know we have the option to rent, um, but whether you're renting or buying, what are mm -hmm. some of the essentials? Uh, you need a tent. Absolutely. You need sleeping bags. You need a tent. What, what are need... some of the other things that people might not necessarily think well, about? Well, as you experience, you might need a softer pad to go underneath your sleeping bag. Yes. Uh, definitely a sleeping pad is, is an essential mm -hmm. item. Uh, the, the thing that you have to keep in mind is you want to make sure that you're going to get everything that you need to be comfortable because if you aren't comfortable, if the children aren't comfortable, they're not going to enjoy their experience or you may not enjoy your experience right. and you may not want to go again or it may mm -hmm. be more difficult to convince the children next time to go with you as well. So um, the tent, the sleeping bag, the sleeping pads, you need a lantern, a stove, a cooler for your food. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to need a first aid kit, maybe some trekking poles if you're going to be taking the kids hiking mm -hmm. uh, to help them with their balance, especially if they're carrying any kind of a backpack. Um, some games for children to play to occupy some of their time, whether it's in the car on the way to the park or once they get there as well. Maybe even a, you know, like we have here, a butterfly net that would be fantastic mm -hmm. for, for helping the children understand about the outdoors a little bit better, right. you know, a little bit better about their environment. But then you have some essentials, like you need your, your matches, you need your tinder, you need your maps mm -hmm. and compasses, a knife. Um, things that are considered those ten, ten essentials that, that all hikers and backpackers should yes. carry with them. So I did see you on your website. You did somewhere in here. I printed out the um, to the ten essentials. Absolutely. And it hasn't. They said it hasn't really changed over the. You know, I think it started in the 30s. The list it's, and it hasn't really changed that much. Although we now have GPS. <laughs> we do. We do. So it's a little harder. To, you know, in cell phones, so it's a little harder to get lost. But. Um, that's a great list. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the list is fairly comprehensive. It's very basic. It has evolved a little bit, but mm -hmm. the, the, the core idea behind the 10 essentials list uh, is, is very much the same. Um, you know, you might see extra food or water or maybe insulation that has been added to the list. You'll mm -hmm. see some lists that have been expanded to 14 or 16 instead of that right. core 10. 10. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the idea is still there. You want to take some sunscreen with you, the first aid kit. And, and some of those other essentials mm -hmm. that I named earlier. And if you are doing it in the summer, bug spray, Absolutely. bug repellent. Absolutely. Um, we were talking a little bit um, about poison. There's a poison ivy repellent. I know in the Northeast, at least in Connecticut, I can't walk down my street without seeing fields of poison ivy. So that might Absolutely. be something that would be good. Absolutely. Um, and, and obviously in the state of Connecticut, you need to be aware of ticks and Lyme disease as well. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're able to identify ticks. Uh, make sure you teach your children how to identify ticks on their body as well. Right. Uh, because that's definitely something you want to be aware of as well. Okay. Um, so we've, we've packed everything up. We have it in the car. We get there. We set up. Um, and the kids start saying, I'm bored. We have some great, you have some great activities that you recommend absolutely for the kids absolutely well you've got things that are you know traditional standbys like mm -hmm. the paddle ball and so this and is the paddle ball. this is the I paddle ball everybody. i think most of us most have probably have played paddle ball as children stuck on the 
paddle something ball. that's traditionally maybe right. a, a beach oriented toy mm -hmm. but yeah um, I wouldn't have thought of bringing paddle ball into the woods well the great thing about paddle ball in the woods is that you're not dealing with wind necessarily so you can actually True. play around a little bit more with the paddle ball too right. so um, paddle ball is obviously something that's uh, enjoyable for kids of all ages mm -hmm. let's say yes bring some extra balls just in case <laughs> yeah you might want to even ping pong balls might substitute well just in case actually ping pong balls would be great because you really can't hit them that far exactly and they're slower so the little kids would be that's a great idea actually Absolutely. because usually if the balls are hard and they go far mm -hmm. So ping pong balls, that's great. They float a little bit better for you, too. Right. A little more time to get underneath them and, yep, and hit them great. back. There's one thing that you talked about that I love or that you brought, and I had never heard of it, and I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to have to get one. The marshmallow shooter. It's a marshmallow shooter, and I think that is so much fun because when I think campfire, I immediately think s'mores. Right. And I always bring marshmallows. Mm -hmm. And how fun is that to be able to shoot marshmallows and maybe see who can shoot at the farthest or, um, I, I, it's really fun. <laughs> Obviously there are a number of games that you can play with something like right. this. And, and the funny thing about the marshmallow shooter is that it's something that we sell equally to adults and kids alike. And oh yeah, I can, I mean, I want one for myself, let <laughs> alone <laughs> for the kids. The big kids enjoy this very, very much. So yeah. it's, it's definitely something fun. Obviously it's something that um, you don't want to leave the marshmallows out there for animals yeah. to, to eat or, or anything of that nature. but. Um, you've always got a big bag of marshmallows with you anyways mm -hmm. for those s'mores, like you mm -hmm. said, but you never seem to use them all. So this is no. a great way to have some fun with that little bit And if you do use extra. them all, you might have a big tummy ache, so it's probably better yeah. to play with some of them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, so I think this is great. This is really fun. And like you said, don't leave the marshmallows. Please. Keep track of your marshmallows. Please. Yes. You don't want to make any of the animals sick. Or, absolutely. Um, so that's great. Um, something that I brought along, which is on your list, is... Mm -hmm. And this is actually art, mine from home, is that um, you make ice cream in this. Absolutely. And it's a game because you fill in, you put the salt around it, you put in your ingredients in the middle, and then you roll it mm -hmm. and kick it and play ball with it. Absolutely. And it makes ice cream in the end. It does. Um, they come in two different sizes. You have the largest there. Um, mm -hmm. But there are a bunch of different recipes that, that are available for this as well. You can make uh, cookies and cream or straight vanilla and anything mm -hmm. in between, obviously. But um, they're fantastic little toys, really. Mm -hmm. But they also um, are a great way to have a good treat, a traditional treat out in the woods as right. well. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you get a um, reward at the end you for do. your play. You do. Definitely. Um, I would, we got the big one. and. Because I was thinking family of four, we should have mm -hmm. the big one. And it's great. I'm, I might have gotten the smaller one just because my kids pooped out a little bit early on it. And then the reward is, comes a little quicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's really fun. This yeah. is a great, great thing to Definitely. bring along. You just need to make sure when you're packing your food, you bring the ingredients. Yeah, absolutely. So. And plenty of them just in case you right, need a little bit extra. An, if you did get the small one and you want more, exactly. you can make another batch. Exactly. Um, you have here a harmonica. Yeah, and a little music book teach you mm -hmm. how to play the harmonica. It's obviously a traditional campfire type activity. Mm -hmm. um, singing songs. Absolutely, playing, singing playing songs and playing the harmonica. It's something that, that goes back to the days in the Old West and probably prior as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it adds to that lore and the mystique and you know, there's nothing like hearing a harmonica around the campfire in the middle of the night. It's, right. it's uh, very traditional and, right. and it's a neat experience for children too, mm -hmm. uh, to take part in. Um, the family that we went camping with um, in October, they brought a game called Survival. And it was great. It was so perfect because we were sitting around the campfire and the questions were, what do you do in this situation? And then you, there's multiple choice and you try and decide, you know, if you're confronted with a bear, what do you do? Right. And then, and so you learn, but it was also fun. It's fun. Yeah, Same it was time. fun. It was very fun. And it was a great activity while we were waiting for the fire to get warm enough to cook our hot dogs or whatever it was we were cooking. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and along those same lines, there are, there are a bunch of toys and, and little activities that you can play with your children. You know, we have the butterfly net here, like mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. We also have a bug loop here that, um, you know, it's basically a magnifying glass so you can see small insects and, and right. see them up close because there are things that you're going to see out in the woods, obviously, that you're not going to see back at home. Right. And letting the children engage in those, those particular activities and, and seeing something new and different and understanding how different it can be outside mm -hmm. and, and a little bit further away from home is really important to expand their horizon, expand their experience. Right. The purpose of being out in nature is to explore nature. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's nice to have some toys, but make sure you spend some time taking a hike, Definitely. looking at the bugs, Definitely. looking in the pond. Engaging yourself and engaging your children in the, in the, the whole experience, not mm -hmm. just moving the site, essentially, that right. you're going to have the same experience with a video game or whatever it might be. Right. So something a little bit different. Absolutely. Um, so first aid, so safety. We talked about a first aid kit. 
probably just bring like a prepacked one, maybe. Well, just you can to... purchase prepacked first aid right. kits, of course. They're they're also commercially available, mm -hmm. and we sell them as well. But mm -hmm. um, you can also create your own, and mm -hmm. you can get yourself a, a small bag or a small box of some sort, and and pack the own your own essentials that you may want to take with you, whether it's the tape or the aspirins or things of that nature, right. in addition to some of the alcohol wipes and um, band-aids and things mm -hmm. of that nature that you're always going to need in any first aid kit. So um, we talked about sunscreen, mm -hmm. probably sunglasses. Absolutely. Hat. Uh, you said an, an extra insulated clothing in case it gets colder than you expect. Definitely. Insulation is something that even in the summertime you're going to need, uh, most likely. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you never know when the temperature might drop. You might get a freak thunderstorm that rolls through, or maybe if you go further north, you might potentially even run, in, run into a light snowstorm. It, mm -hmm. it's, it has happened, and, and it's better to be prepared and not need it and pack the car a little right. bit extra than, than to wish that you had it and you're right. a little bit colder or wetter than you really would like to would, be. Right, change of clothes in case you fall in the pond when you're looking at the frogs or whatever Absolutely. you're doing. <laughs> Absolutely, and all that's fun and great, but you right. want to make sure that the whole experience is fun as exactly. well, and that means having an extra set of clothes with you to change into after you yeah. get wet because you fall in the pond. So. Right, right, yep. Um, and then there was something else that was recommended on the, you know, t there's a whole section on family camping and how to family camp successful mm -hmm. in this uh, expert advice section of the website. And one of the things they said was whistles to keep your kids, you know, if they get lost mm -hmm. or uh, just a regular old whistle or, I mean. Well, you can get a regular old whistle, absolutely. Mm -hmm. A lot of the backpacks that we have available now actually have a whistle built into some of the straps. And oh, really? Okay. Absolutely. For example, this pack here actually has a whistle that that is, is nice and convenient for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's on the sternum strap, and it's actually very easy to use. So it's going to be up around your chest, uh, oh, just it's below your chin. Built into the clip. It's actually built into the clip, which is really handy to use as well. So it's right there, easy easy to huh. use. If for some reason your hands become incapacitated or right. whatever, you can reach down and grab it. You know, it, unfortunately, those situations do happen, but it's there and really easy to get easy to. Easy to get to. That's a great idea. But you can also get whistles that are going to you know strap around your neck or something right. along those lines. That, but, and uh, you know, kids love to have you know, toys and yeah, they're special whistle. Or, Absolutely. Right. I thought that I hadn't never thought about that, but I thought that was a great idea. Definitely. Even you know, if they just get a little separated. Or something. Yeah, definitely. Um, so now in Connecticut we do we have lots of wildlife, bear, mm -hmm. deer, absolutely. All sorts of coyotes, all sorts and just here in West Hartford, let alone <laughs> yeah. let alone out in the woods. So um, give us a couple safety tips on dealing with the natural animals that you might come across. Well you know, it's with bear especially, but with animals in general, mm -hmm. you do have to take some special precaution and or special precautions, mm -hmm. I should say. Um, the first and foremost is is make sure that you wash your dishes, things of that nature, and you do that away from your campsite. You want to keep all the food out of your tent or out of where you're going to be mm -hmm. staying at night if it's in a shelter of some sort. Okay. Um, so if you're car camping, make sure you keep your food in your trunk in sealed containers okay, and sealed containers and keep that away from your campsite if possible, or mm -hmm. at least away from your sleeping area. Um, as far as even things like toothpaste and your really? soaps and things of that nature, oh, you want to keep them away from your campsite as well. So okay. your toiletry kit that you might normally take with you, uh, make sure right. that you keep that back in your car at least. Because it smells sweet, they might be attracted to Exactly. The they, okay. Their noses are much more sensitive than ours and they can smell those from those kinds of things right. from a long ways away. So uh, the big thing is make sure that you keep those, those um, I guess odoriferous type mm -hmm. products away from your campsite. So don't attract them in the first place. Exactly. And if you do, you're going to attract them to another area other than where you're going to be. Okay. But uh, try and keep everything in a sealed container because it's not only for your safety but also for the safety of everybody else that's out there enjoying the outdoors as right. well. That's a good tip. Don't that's feed the animals. When you see them, please yeah. don't feed the animals um, because it, it generates bad behavior on their part or unnatural behavior on their part. They'll um, associate people with food exactly. and then they'll pester people. Exactly. So food. even mm -hmm. things like the birds, um, let the birds experience their life naturally in the way that they were uh, meant to be in the outdoors. Um, you know, like you said, if they associate humans with food, even something as simple as a bird or, or as basic as feeding a bird is going to become a learned behavior that they come to expect of humans. Right. And that's not necessarily that's not for them. the experience that they should be having, or we should be having either. Right. So we've had we've had a great trip. We've cooked on our cook stove. We've you know hiked. We have some great packs here. We've done a little entertainment. We survived the night. It was nice. We got we were warm. Nice we warm. had the right equipment. <laughs> um, so when you're packing up, what what are the things that are really important to remember when you're leaving? 
Well, the biggest thing is pack in or pack out what you've packed in. Um, always take some extra garbage bags with you. Um, at least take out what you brought in with you, whether it's the trash or the extra food or whatever it may be. But it, it's always great to teach your children to clean up a little bit extra and, and try and leave the, their campsite and the, the area that they were um, playing around in mm -hmm. better than when they found it. And okay. uh, if you can do that, you're actually going to create a better outdoor uh, experience for everybody because mm -hmm. the next time you come back, it's hopefully going to be left better for you than it was for the previous person as well. So yeah. creating that experience for your children and, and teaching that ethic at a, at a young age is extremely important because you build that standard into their mind and into their the, the way that they live their lives. And it's going to translate into other areas as well. Right. Well, and things like don't, don't pick the wild flowers and take a don't, picture instead you know yeah. if you're going to use wood for your campfire just what's fallen already not you know don't chop down trees and right. know, just respect what's there leave it there absolutely and, and take your stuff out make sure that if you are using a fire an open fire of some sort that it is completely out when you leave it mm -hmm. both at the end of your camping trip but also during the daytime if you're going to be going out for hikes from there make sure that the fire is completely out before you before you leave it abandoned right that's um, a good point actually. but definitely mm -hmm. uh, try and take pictures take as many pictures as you can digital cameras are fantastic for that yes. purpose you don't have to print every print so right. um, take a bunch of pictures and leave that flower or leave that insect for mm -hmm. the next person that might enjoy, enjoy that experience it, too you don't you don't take it with you um, another tip that I'm not sure we talked about. I had mentioned we went camping with another family and mm -hmm. one of the tips on your um, you know, family camping experience is to bring friends. Absolutely. Because for kids, how fun is that to just experience what they're doing with another friend and they can kind of make up their own game if they're into Little House on the Prairie, they can pretend they're roughing it in the, you know, woods of Minnesota or whatever it Absolutely. is that they do. Yeah. It seems to be, for our girls, it seemed to be more fun because they had friends with them and they just were doing all sorts of great things. Yeah. Um, Definitely. I mean, it, part of part of creating that that experience for children is making it as comfortable for them as possible. And it, and one one of the ways that you can help that is by asking permission from the other parents to to bring some of their friends along too. Mm -hmm. And and uh, creating that experience that is comfortable for them. And right. if they can go out and experience their running around the neighborhood in a completely different place. Yes. And, have fun doing it out in something that's totally new for each of them. It's mm -hmm. going to be fantastic. At the same time, you don't always get the opportunity to show both sides or both children um, in this situation something new. And it's a great opportunity for one of the friends to teach the other about the outdoors right. and about their experience that they've had previous to that as well. Right. So if you're looking for a way to really introduce somebody else to the outdoors, mm -hmm. that's a fantastic way to do yeah. it. And it's more there's enthusiasm there. Absolutely. Which is great. It's honest enthusiasm, which is great. Right. Which is good. This has been great. I think I think we're, I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> Fantastic, good. Um, so if you have been inspired to get out into the great outdoors, whether it be camping or a hike, um, and you have questions, more questions, or want some more information, you can call the number that is on the screen and ask for a camping expert, and they'd be more than happy to help you or direct you um, to the right place. So um, thanks for coming. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for sharing all of this, this great um, set up and all the great information. I think it's been it's been inspiring. Great, good. Um, so I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. Until next month, try and take some time out to do something that makes your life great. Thanks for watching and good night. Mm -hmm.